Hello, good day, my glorious families. I welcome you to today's chapter of the day. So today's chapter is taken from the book of Job, chapter 7. We have started a series on the book of Job and we read chapter by chapter. So we don't just read, we read and study. So studying in the sense that you read and then explain how the spirit makes you understand what you understand so you drop your commentary so when i read i drop my commentary or as i read i comment along with my reading and that is exactly what i would like us to do studying this book and see more because there is more to the book of job than we know in the book of job i was able to i was able to understand god the best and that chapter i'm just about we are still getting there we are getting to that chapter the, there are four chapters that makes me enjoy the book of Job. And out of those chapters, I think I've been able to add another chapter, which was um, chapter four, I think, where Eliphaz, one of the three friends, one of the three friends of Job, was trying to talk to Job and he, he made mention of God's um, greatness. So there are places in the, there are chapters, like some few chapters in the books of, in the book of Job, where god's mightiness and greatness well explained like when you read you can never remain the same again this is the essence of me choosing choosing the book of job and this book of job happens to be i would say my favorite for now because i i love other books like uh, the book of hebrew <coughs> I love Revelation because it reveals what will happen in the end of time. You know, I love every I think each book is interesting, like I always say, but there are books that I I I, I favorite like they are just my favorites. So let's read in chapter from chapter one through six. The long and short of the summary is just that Job, the devil, incited um evil against Job and wanted God to take all his possession. And one thing I want us to take home from this book is that if you read chapter two, you will realize that when God incited this evil against Job in chapter one, and he said, take all his possession, take all his children, take all his everything he has, and then he will curse you. Job ended up praising God instead. And that got the devil more hungry. And in chapter two, he still told God, when God said, oh, you can see he never cursed me. And Job incited more evil against him. He said, oh, let me, let me go and deal with him. His personal blood body, flesh to flesh, that yeah, let him, let him torture his skin. Let him torture his flesh. So if you, he, he, he actually, um, wiped off Job's all possessions and wiped off all his children. So someone losing all his children, isn't that his flesh? Haven't you touched his flesh? Haven't you, haven't you touched and tortured his heart already? But instead, he incited more evil. He, he even inflicted Job with diseases. So, you know, and at the end of it all, still Job did not curse God. But what did Job do? When Job mourned for three days, not talking, and his friends came over, and they were still talking and talking, by the time Job broke silence, Job started cursing himself. So after Job cursed himself, his friend, Eliphaz, because three of his friends came visiting, and one, one none of them could speak, but they mourned with him in silence. Then when Job broke silence and was Job started cursing himself. That made one of his friends to break silence as well and responded to him. And that was in um, Job chapter 6. So, um, I mean, that was in Job chapter 4 when Eliphaz, his friend, speaks for the first time to open up the whole speech that the three friends couldn't say. So then uh, in chapter 6, Job replied to a life as his friend because his friend was kind of saying oh you see yourself as being righteous but guess what when things when things like this happen to righteous people it is because um it is because they have done something wrong before the lord and god is now punishing them so god is god is disciplining you God is disciplining. I would say discipline, not punish. God is disciplining you because He loves you. So that's that's from the aspect of, um, from the aspect of a life as that's what He feels. He feels well. You are a child of God. We all know that. But if God could do this to you, if God could allow all of this evil to befall you, it's because you are falling short of God's glory. That you are you are a sinner. So the best thing is for you to plead with God and also 
you know, also um, ask for mercy. So for me, I would say this is just a lesson to us because this is how we were able to know that even people that are righteous can also be attacked by the devil. And when it happens, you don't curse God, you don't curse yourself. Instead, you should rebuke the devil and give praises to God because that is how you can get deliverance. So chapter 7 now. Chapter 7 says, please, be aware that this is, this video may be more than 10 minutes. So chapter 7 says, isn't each person consigned? Now, um, Job responded to Job uh, Job responded to Elifaz after Elifaz made those statements. He got Job upset. Good. Job was like, so you don't expect me to be angry? So you don't expect me to say what I said? Why won't you say it? Why won't I say it? Can't you see the amount of pain? Job said anyways, I don't blame you. You don't know what it feels like, which is true. He who wears the shoes knows where it pinches. So right now, Job is still talking, replying Elifaz for saying that God is disciplining him. So he said, isn't each person consigned to forced labor on it? Are not his days like those of a hired worker? Like a slave, he belongs to shade. Like a hired worker, he waits for his pay. So I have been I have been made to inherit months of he said he has been made to inherit months of fertility and troubled nights and have been assigned to him. When he lies down, he thinks when he when will he get up? He said, but the evening drags on endlessly, and he toss and turn until dawn. <clears throat> he said his flesh is clothed with maggots and entrusted with encrusted with dirt. His skin forms scraps scraps and then hooses verse 6 he said his days pass more sweetly than a wave weaver's shuttle they come to an end without hope remember that you uh he said remember that my life is but a breath my eye will never again see. he said his eyes will never again see anything good hmm. he still keep cursing himself and this is what the devil wants he said the eye of anyone who looks on him will no longer see him your eyes will look for he said your eyes will look for him but he will be gone as a cloud fades away and vanishes so the one who goes down to shore will never rise again he will never return to his house his hometown will no longer remember him therefore he will not restrain his mouth he will speak in the anguish of his spirit he will complain in the bitterness of his soul this is job talking i'm not just saying i i said he uh, he said <clears throat> Am I the sea or a sea monster that you keep me under guard? When I say, he said, when he says his bed will comfort him and his couch will ease his complaints, then you frighten him with dreams and terrify him with visions so that <clears throat> he prefers strangling. He prefers strangling death rather than life in his body, in this body. He said, he give up, man, that can you look at your <laughs> God have mercy? Chapter 16, Job 7 16. Job says, I give up. I will not, oh God, I will live forever in Jesus. In Jesus' name. Job said he has given up. He will not live forever. He said, Leave me alone. He said, For his days are a breath. Oh my God, I feel for him. 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 Chapter 16, he said he has given up because he was still busy mourning his children and his all his possession. And here comes sicknesses, boys, all sorts of evil skin sicknesses being inflicted upon him. So I will he not nag. He will nag because anyone, that's why he said, what do you expect? It is blood that runs through his veins. What do you expect in life as? What do you expect? expect him to do he now said what is a mere human that that you think so highly of him and pay so much attention to him you inspect him every morning and put him to the test every moment will you ever look away from me or leave me alone long enough to swallow 
if I have sinned, what have I done to you? Watcher of humanity. This time, he's directing this challenge to God. He's challenging his maker. Like, God, what have I done wrong? Why will you do this? So that is one thing I want us to learn about this book. One, another, one of the things I want us to learn about this book of Job, that whenever things go wrong and you are... You know that you are standing upright at least to the level to you have fulfilled some little righteousness that I would say because we can't be hundred percent righteous. You know you are a faithful child of God, you know you're doing your best, and still evil comes calling. Just know that it's not from God. And that is one thing I learned from this book. One of the things I learned here in this book of Job is that when it happens, rebuild the devil and give thanks to God. Because when the devil strikes, when Satan strikes, he doesn't strike because he wants to come and tease you. He strikes because he needs your soul. He needs to destroy your soul. And if God did not permit him to touch your life, it's worth thanking him for. And another thing is that no matter how mighty it is, the evil is God is always at the corner to save his own children. No one prays for what happens to Job. God forbid. Like, it is too much to happen to a parent. Too much. God forbid. So, let's read on. He, he, so this time around, he's facing God. He had, he had left a life as right now. He's challenging his maker. And that was what he was doing before. Challenging his maker. Asking him. It's not that he's saying that I was... He wasn't actually saying, I'm righteous. God, I'm righteous. He's just saying that I've tried my best. I've tried not to offend you. I have tried not to commit sin. I have tried not to hurt you as my God, as my Lord and personal Savior. So even if I have, in any way that I never knew, is this the judgment you're supposed to give your own people? Is this what you're supposed to do to your own people? Because Job never knew what was going on in the heavenlies. He never knew that it was Satan who came to incite this evil, not God. His, his, um, his, his, his thoughts for us are of good, not of bad, to give us an expected end. God, is, God loves us and we not. He doesn't want our tears. The only tears he loves us to shed is, are those tears of choice, not of sorrow. So whenever the sorrow things happen, it is not God. It is not God. Even when God had to discipline you, you yourself will know this is God disciplining me because you will know what you will know you've done something. And if God does not just discipline you, God will let you know either by vision, by dream or something, you will know and you will enjoy the punishment. You will know that it's time to ask for mercy. But for God to just turn around against you, no, that is not the God we serve. God is like the we to our children, parents to children. That's how he cautions us. He will scold you. He will discipline you. Just like Eliva said in his, uh, chapter 6, from, from from between verses 8 through 27, where he said he will, he said he will wound you and put bandage on it. That is God for you. God will discipline you, not to kill you, not to destroy you, but for you to just learn. And then he will still be there to receive you back with his hands of mercy. But not in this manner. God will not. That's what I always say. I'm saying it now. Especially the Muslim people, they believe God gives <coughs> And God takes back. God won't give you good goodness, riches. His riches add, add no sorrow. God will not give you, make you rich just to snatch it back overnight. No, God will not give you your children just to kill them for you. No, that is not the God we serve. But it is Satan who is always inciting this evil. I want us to stick to these lessons because that is the truth. Don't let us be deceived. That is the, the fact that God, Job said, God take... God gives and God takes it back. It doesn't mean it is right. He said it because that was what he thought. I am very sure after Job had got back all his possession, he realized that wasn't the truth. So let's keep reading. He now said, if I had, if I had, if I have sinned, what have I done to you, watcher of humanity? Hmm. He said, why have you made me your target so that I have become a burden to you? He said, why not forgive my sin? And pardon my iniquity. For soon I will lie down. For soon I will lie down in the grave. He said, you will eagerly seek me. But I will be gone. Lord Jesus, have mercy. I love this part. Hmm. I love this part. Let me just circle this part. From 16 to 21. I love that part. So right now, that is uh, where we're going to stop. So let's do a little bit of reflection. He said, what are some practical ways we can encourage people who are experiencing unusual pain in their lives, even when they may be struggling with serious doubts, fears, and even anger towards God? Huh. 
Oh Lord, this happens a lot. In fact, when it happens, it makes some believers to backslide. Ah, thank you, Jesus. I want to say thank you, Jesus. When ministering to those who are suffering, we must avoid adding any person's pain by communicating false information. That's another lesson. So those are the commentaries which I don't want to read everything. I want to say thank you for joining me. I'm sorry we had a, we had a lengthy video again. Sorry about it. Thank you so much. Do you have anything to pen down for us? Please drop it in the comment section or you can private chat me. I love you and I'll see you again in another chapter, which is chapter 8. So watch out for chapter 8. God bless you. I love you. Bye. We had a glorious generation for me.